Hello and welcome to part three of Divorce the Mosses. It's about three, four weeks since we started, isn't it? Let's just have a recap about what we did. Well, first of all, when we turned up, it was just moss and weeds. So we treated those. And then the second time we came, we then did a scarify and another moss treatment. And then we're back today and we can quite clearly see that the favour is returning in the way of the grass and that we've actually got a bit more grass growing now and the moss is beginning to recede. So today I'm going to give it another scarify and that hopefully will be the last one and so we can see we did a good job last time it started to expose all the soil now so some areas need a bit more and my pull cord should work today because I've had that repaired. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to fill this hole in from there it's quite deep you can see if I just stand in it, you can quite clearly see it's quite deep. So we're going to fill that in and then we're going to take some more moss off these high bits. But I'm going to scarify with the line and then go straight through that. And hopefully that will uh, reduce that hump edge a little bit more. And then in a couple of weeks, we can get on with some proper renovations. So let's get the kit out for repairing this hole because, do you know what? I'm in a bit of a quandary as to do the hole first and then scarify, or scarify and then fill the hole in. I think I'm actually gonna scarify first and then fill the hole in. So we'll do that. So we're gonna get the scarifier out and we'll give this a going over. So first time out of the workshop, even though it was a few weeks ago now, I've not used this. Let's just give the, uh, the old machine a start. I forgot to chalk it. Put that back in there. Way! All oh, right, as Bob Ross would say. Right, okay, so we've just done our double pass. And still, look how much has come out. But what you'll find is, when you scarify as it's drying out, as this is, that the amount of thatch and moss and whatever else comes up is absolutely ridiculous. So there's probably twice as much as come out as last time. But I have gone a little bit deeper on the scarifier. Now, your question will be, is how deep do I go? Let the blades tell you. There's no hard and fast rule of how deep you should go, but you'll know if you're going too deep because your blades won't spin round because there's just too much resistance in the ground. So we do want to be going into the surface, unlike a vertical where we just want to graze the surface. With the scarifier, you do really want to get in there. But when it's a mossy lawn, you're probably not going to go that deep anyway because you're going to be going into the moss. Um, and then like on this job, really, we're not even... In places, we are going into the soil, but in the majority of it, we're still in the moss layer. So it's difficult to say how deep you should go as well with an undulated lawn. Areas are going to be higher and lower. In the higher areas, you're going to go deeper, naturally, because you, the higher surfaces are touching the blades sooner. And in your lower areas, the blades aren't touching at all, so you're not going to really get any uh, scarify in there, like in this hole here. You know, you can see where it's not really taking anything out because the blades didn't touch it. So let's get this raked up, and then we'll have a better idea of what kind of job we've done and how good a job we've done on these lines of moss where the washboarding forward slash ribbing is. Um, already just by walking on it I can feel that they've, they've been reduced somewhat by scarifying with them and taking out some of that moss. So hopefully we've kind of alleviated that problem a little bit. We still need to top dress it as well but that'll be in a few weeks even though the wind is high today and it's a bit cold i do feel the temperatures are getting a bit warmer because it's not bitterly cold it's just like wind cold if you know if that makes sense so get me rake out we'll get this raked up and we'll give a cut today as well so let's get on with that So 
So that's that raked up. And lo and behold, the rain's arrived. This job just comes hand in hand with rain, doesn't it? Because last time it started raining as well, but luckily we're not putting any products down today, so it doesn't actually matter all we're doing. He's picking this up, gonna mow it, and then we'll get on with filling that hole, which doesn't require any products other than um, the sand, uh, the root zone to go underneath, and I'll show you what I've got for that later on. So let's try and get some more work done before it chucks it down. Okay, so that's all picked up now. You can see we're making good inroads into that moss and down here at least as well. Those ribbon lines have begun to recede as well and they're not half as uh, high. You can see now that the a lot of it's gone and it's uh, almost level with the original lawn now so that won't need as much top dressing. Now the good thing about what we've done is now is that I'm quite happy to leave this as the last scarify and then what we'll do is as it dries out the birds will take it for their nest so you, you just watch this space and the birds will finish this job off for us so we'll let nature take its course so let's get it mowed and let's see what it looks like after that and then that's it and then we can start working on this hole one thing we will have to do is on a job like this where, where you expose the soil after a long time of being covered in moss is it does get dry patch straight away so we will have to give this a wetting agent for this job to really succeed so we'll do that with uh, the H2 go so let's get the mower out and let's get this bombed off before it really does start chucking it down as I don't really want to get wet one more thing that I wanted to say was mowing afterwards is a good idea as well because not only does it pick up any scarifyings that you've left behind because you're not going to get them all up with the rake you're going to actually remove some more with the mower as well so today i'm going to cut it on number two and then we'll really get into that thatch moss layer again and remove even more stuff so let's get on with that and we'll see what it looks like after Lovely jubbly. Right, everything's coming together now. I really feel like we're making inroads into this. We're almost at soil level everywhere because, as you can see, it's just bare. So, time to fill this hole in. And if we have a look over here with this washboard in here, you can see now where I've removed the moss from the top where it's soily, like there, on these lines. These are almost level now with each other, so that's great news. It won't need as much top dressing or as much attention as I thought it would. So really looking good. All we need now is some nice weather so we can do some seeding and top dressing and then this lawn will be away. It wouldn't be a great achievement for this lawn if the goal was to get a cylinder lawnmower on it this year. Who would have thought it? Should we make that our goal? If we can get a cylinder lawnmower on this this year, we've uh, achieved miracles from where we set off, because I didn't think it was possible. So we're, let's try and make it happen. But let's try and make it happen first by filling that hole in. Right, so there's a few ways we can address this situation. And that is, you could just fill this area with soil and then put some seed on it and let the seed grow and level it out and be level and you'd have a lawn. But what you would have, there's a lovely nice bit of grass here and the rest of the lawn would look awful so you would make this stand out even more. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it out, lift it out, fill it with some root zone that I've got. Well, it's actually 70-30 top dressing which has just got really wet over the years. It's actually about seven years old this but it's just been from shit from one place to the other and it's finally ended up here and this is where it's going to spend the rest of its days. So we'll lift it out, fill it up to where we want to get it level and then we'll just put that back down. Now again there's two ways we could do that. We can just cut out a square, lift out the turf, and then fill it with soil, put the turf back on. Or we can do a H cut, which is a cut there, a cut there, and a cut there, peel it back, and then fill it in. I don't know which one I'm gonna do yet, but I'm gonna decide now. So give us a sec, and then we'll get on with it. So the tools we're gonna to need is an edging tool and a shovel. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna cut the whole square out, and then that way, we can get it a bit more spot on than if we did just a H cut. 
So we just quick cut a square out, making sure that you go around the hole, leaving yourself a bit of the level area. Doesn't have to be square or anything, as I've just shown you, because that's a bit wonky. The main thing is, is that we're gonna be able to cut it out. Do a cut in the middle as well. It makes it easier to get out in smaller pieces and then you can just put them back. So I'm gonna cut it into four. I'll do it this way and then I don't obstruct the view. It's not raining though, so it's a bit, uh, bit better. It's not as windy. Never spray on a day like today, so I'm glad we're not spraying today because we'd be spraying everybody else's lawn other than our own. So just get your shovel. It really doesn't matter if you make a mess here because we're going to be doing the top dressing and stuff. So just pull it out and see how deep the hole is. So let's do that again. Come out in a sec. Just remember where those go. Just come around here. Yeah, you're live on air, you know. So you'll be on later. <laughs> Did you hear that, everybody? I should be getting the appearance fees. Right, so next job is we'll get our top dressing, which is now not kiln dried, nice and not compactable but it's really wet root zone so this is good for this so I'll just fill it in we know we've got enough because we've got the soil we can use up there as well so we're not it's nothing like rocket science like I say it's just a case of getting it to a level point and then when we top dress and overseed It'll all blend in. So we've got that like that, what I'll do is I'll just stand on it just to give it a bit of compaction. And then what we might have to do is we might just have to get a bit off here as we put that back in. So you see now we're too proud. So we'll just knock some off here. At my school college when I used to go there when I was 16, an 8 to 18. They used to have things called turf boxes and it was like a piece of wood with a board around it and it, you had like this saw and you put the put it in and then you used to go like that and, and use the edges of the box to get it nice and level. I could do one of them really but I've never seen one to buy, I've never really thought of making one. So we're about right with that one. To see how much we've raised that up. This one, the same, we'll just take some of that soil off. Put that in, just to give it a try out for size. We can always scoop some of the stuff underneath away. Still a bit high, take some off the side. So, it's just Sunday gardening this, there's no skill. This is the first time I've ever done this really, so you're learning with me. It's just having the kind of nose to do it, isn't it? And you just put that in like that. Go like that a little bit. Anybody can do this. You don't need a sports surf degree. I haven't even got one of those anyway, but you certainly don't need one to do that. And that's level. And then you can just hit it with the spade a little bit. That's always a good way of finishing it off, just to get it nice and level and create some compaction jobs are good in right so we'll do these last two pieces we can just move some of that out put that back there like that see how that works and 
The only problem we have got now is that because we've raised it up, this bit hasn't been scarified. So it's quite thatchy as all the rest of the garden is now back to soil level. So what I will do is, before we come to overseed in a couple of weeks, hopefully this will have taken and we can just run over it with the scarifier and just remove some of this thatch. You can see it's, look how, how much is in there, how spongy it is because it's never really been cut because the more we can't get down there. So we'll either have to do that with the machine or just by hand, but either way, we'll, we'll get it done one way or the other. Last piece. Just uh, take some of that soil out, don't need all that in there. Put that in like that. And that's how you fill a hole. tidy up the mess. Good working in days like this, in the, in the, uh, the spring, early spring, because it tests your resolve and if you can get out on days like this, you can get out on a hot sunny day as well. If you let it beat you this time of year, it beats you for the rest of the year, which is what I don't want to happen. So you can either, if you want it as well, you get some of the old top soil and and you can just uh, get to that root zone and just put it in the cracks as well. But again, doesn't matter if you don't, just a quick repair. And that, now the mower can just ride over that without causing any issues. So, job done. Okay, thanks for watching part three of Divorce Your Mosses. As you can see, the job's really coming together now. We've filled the hole in, we've done our last scarify. The next stop will be seeding and top dressing, which I can't wait for, because I really feel the spring will be getting going then. If you want to know where we've got to this point, there's two other videos to watch. Find them at the end screen when this video finishes, and they're there for you to watch. Very interesting, and at very least, they'll help you sleep if you watch them before bed. So, until we meet again, take care.